Hi, I'm John Pullman, professional boxing trainer, owner of Pullman's Gym in Northridge, California, and this is Pullmanomics. If you watch any great boxing match or any great fighters fight, you'll notice a lot of different things. But one thing that sticks out is they're not stiff. Nobody's standing there stiff just waiting for one another. If they are, they're probably going to be in trouble. So, like Will Smith said, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. That makes me think about building a rhythm in boxing, right? So you have some type of motion, you have some type of rhythm while you're jockeying for position, while you're getting ready to engage, while you're thinking about your next move. You don't just stand stiff. So today we're going to really delve into building a boxing rhythm. Basically, uh, we have a nice piece of paper here. We're going to do what I like to call like the paper drill. Um, we've done this before in the past when we talked about slips and rolls. Um, you can refer back to that if you want to see you know, and more of that as well. But it's a really great tool for using to practice building a rhythm as well, as you're going to see in a second. But I have Josh here in the ring, so I'm going to use a paper, just a piece of paper and some tape, put on the mirror to about where his head level is, and this is really going to help us uh, building a rhythm. So I'm going to jump in here with Josh, and he's going to be in his boxing stance, right? And we're going to practice, he's going to practice building his rhythm, right? We're going to use this paper drill. So he has his head, if he doesn't move, he has his head right where the paper would be, right? So his face is being blocked, which is very important. You want your face to be blocked when you don't move because, in essence, that's not where you want to be. You want to be able to see your face a lot doing this drill. Because if, think about it in terms of, if I, can't, if I can't see my face, I'm in danger right now because that's kind of like being a sitting duck. You're right in the danger zone. If a person swings at you, your head is still and stiff and right in their like wheelhouse where they can hit you with a hard punch in that danger zone. It's like the mid-range zone. So he's getting in his boxing stance and when he builds a rhythm, it should be, your rhythm should be special to you. Like, you don't have to look like any, anybody else. When you first start doing this, you're gonna, probably try to imitate people, which is okay, but eventually you're going to develop your own rhythm. My rhythm won't, work, won't look like Josh's rhythm. But what a rhythm really is, is just a body in motion for a lot of different reasons, okay? Your body's in motion, it helps you for defense and offense. Now he's just going to think about, he's thinking about his upper body in the mirror, right? He got his little motion going. And a good way to think about this is like slips and rolls, right? You learned slips, We've been going over rolls. These are kind of like mini slips and rolls, kind of letting them flow all together, one into the other. So he shifts this way, he's rolling, he's shifting, he's kind of sh shifting his shoulders like he's slipping, he's rolling. That's a good way to practice. You also want to focus on keeping your balance, right? Just because he's shifting, he might shift here a little bit, but he don't stay up there. He gets his weight back, so his balance is good, and he moves his head a little bit back here. So he's essentially he's moving his head, but he's moving his shoulders really in the legs. It's not just moving your head, it's moving your whole body really, essentially. <clears throat> so really good to think about. Also, you have like your, your head movement where you really just slip a punch, right? Here, punch comes, slips it. Or he really just rolls a punch, gets under it, right? You have those moves. So he makes like a big move, right? He slips a punch. Woo! He, moves, he moves his head under a punch, right? Then you got your head movement, which is more like building a rhythm per se, where he's, he's, it's a constant motion, but it's not necessarily just slipping. It's not really you're just slipping a shot yet. You're just keeping yourself flowing. So that's kind of like what, what he's doing right now. He's got his little rhythm, upper body. What I like to, the great analogy that I like to use is like a cobra. That's mother nature teaching you a lesson. If you ever seen a cobra that's getting ready to strike or it's getting ready to be an altercation, it's never it's totally stiff. It has some kind of motion going, right? That's for two reasons. Well, a lot of reasons, but two that stick out to me are if it wants to strike, it's already in motion, right? So it's easier for it to strike. And also, you don't know when it's going to come after you because it's always moving. If it were to just stand stiff and just come right after you, you know, oh, it's coming after me as soon as it moves. So you can move or defend or whatever you need to do. So it's good for offense. It's also good for defense because it's a moving target. It's always moving, which then makes it also easier to make another defensive move. And it's not just sitting still for you to tee off on it. Right? So that's a really good analogy, I think, uh, uh, when you're th talking about fighting, is try to have like some kind of cobra-like rhythm. 
Beautiful. So that's upper body rhythm right there. Shoulders, a little bit of mini slips and rolls. Think about being smooth like a cobra, like little circles, not super, super rigid all the time. Then sometimes a punch comes, he can move fast. Whoop, exactly. He can step back if he needs to. Whoop, he can roll if he needs to. And he got his little rhythm going. So while he's thinking about what he's going to do, he's moving his upper body. So that's thinking about your upper body while you're building a rhythm. So here we have Josh, right? He's going to get in his boxing stance. He's using this paper again. He has his upper body moving smooth, calculated. Look, even look at his hands. His hands, I mean, again, this is not like, not everybody's going to be the same, but you kind of want your hands to stay lined up similar to where your shoulders are going so it's easier to punch from there. So you're, you're not, he's not moving his head and his hands kind of sway all over the place with his body. His hands are kind of staying right in line with his shoulders. He's got his little rhythm going. And then you're going to start looking at his feet, right? He's going to be taking little baby steps to the right, to the left. So he's incorporated. Maybe this little bit of light on his feet, almost like he's stepping on glass. He doesn't want to hurt his feet. He's light on his feet, side to side. That's very important. He got his balance good. So he's not just moving his upper body, right? Sometimes, sometimes you're just moving your upper body with planted feet. That's okay sometimes, but you don't want to be stuck in that mode. You want to be able to move your feet and your upper body in motion together as well. See, we're taking little steps with his feet. Good. So combining your feet with your upper body in motion is also really important. So here we have Josh, uh, right? He's left-handed, um, so he's angled himself this way so you can see it really good. Um, he's going to be in his rhythm, right? So he's shifting his body a little bit. He's not standing stiff. He's got his feet working a little bit, right? Left and right, just how we've been going over. His upper body's motion. Now, everybody's rhythm is different, obviously. His rhythm is going to look different than my rhythm, but it's, a, it's his rhythm, so he's ready, right? Right? So from here, he's going to show you that he could do things. He got his little rhythm. Then he shoots his jab. Bop! Right there, off his rhythm. It kind of flows real good. Motion comes from motion. Really good. Bop! Right there. Left hand. Bop! Good. He steps over this way a little bit. Steps over that way. Basic punches off his rhythm. Keeps in his distance. Even though he's keeping his rhythm, He's still keeping his distance from, he's just still in a safe place, right? Jab. Pop. Good. One, two. Pop. Good. Nice little rhythm. One, two, hook. Pop. Good. So it flows really nice off that rhythm. Left hand. Roll. Pop. Good. The defense flows off the rhythm too, right? Slip. Whoop. Right. Good basic defense off the rhythm. Step back. Whoop. Right. It's easier for him to move if he's already moving. You've seen the tennis player waiting for a serve. They don't stand stiff. They got a little motion in case the ball comes fast. It's easier for them to move fast. Same thing with like a baseball player. The pitch is coming fast, they got like a little bit of rhythm. It's easier for him to keep it going. And as he's moving his rhythm, right, his body, I might ask for a jab. He's gonna put himself in that position to throw a jab, what's comfortable for him. He's moving, wop. So he uses his rhythm to position himself good for the jab. That's another good trick. Left hand, right hook. So if he were to shift too far over one side in his rhythm for some reason, he's got to get himself back in position to shoot that left hand right hook. So he uses the rhythm to correct his position too. One, two, one. Good. Any combinations, he could throw them all. One, two, hook. Good. Two rolls. Defense. Good. So as you see, the rhythm actually helps the punches and the moves as well. It's not the point of who hits harder. It's what you got behind the punch.